Building a gaming PC for $500 that can play any game in 2025 is only possible if you know what you're doing. Ignore the internet elitists who claim you must spend $1,000 minimum. I'll show you exactly how I built this aesthetic, performance-packed rig that plays Fortnite at 154 FPS, Marvel Rivals at 96, and even Starfield above 70. Right now is a great time to build because of the current pricing in the PC hardware market. This video combined with the cheat sheet, condensed down PC building live stream, and dedicated benchmarking video give you everything that you need to make it happen. And real quickly, if you're new here, I'm Zach and I make videos that help you either build or buy your next gaming PC. Whether you want to follow this easy to copy build guide, use my free website with PC building tools, or even order a pre-built from me, I've got you covered either way. I'm not pushing you one way or another, I'm just showing you options like the build we have today. So let's jump in. All right, so starting with the top of the parts list, we have the CPU, and for a $500 gaming PC, you really have two choices. If you wanna go with the easy route and just buy new from Amazon or Newegg, then I recommend the Ryzen 5 5500. But if you wanna actually keep your build under budget and have better performance for the price, I'd try to find a used Ryzen 5 3600, which is what I did. I snagged this six core and 12 threaded beast over on Jawa for only 60 bucks. The performance between them is similar, and the 5500 has even been dropping in price brand new. Grab whichever has the better deal. I'll have a link to this along with every part we're talking about today down in the description. Next up is the motherboard, and I recently used this in my $600 white PC build, which is linked up in the upper right hand corner, and this is the Machinist B450M. Honestly, I don't even know if it has a proper model name. This is an incredibly cheap AliExpress special that I grabbed for $49. Beside the GPU, which we'll talk about in just a second, this is where we're able to save the most money. The cost of AM4 motherboards is starting to creep up, so paying less than 50 bucks, especially for an aesthetic all white model, is solid. There's absolutely not a single bell nor whistle on this cheap of a motherboard though, and there's only two RAM slots, but don't worry, we took full advantage. Instead of starting with a 16 gig kit that you'll have to replace in order to upgrade to 32, we're just gonna start with that because the price of this Pinnacle Conduit kit is only $44 over on Newegg. This is a 32 gigabyte, 3200 megahertz CL16 DDR4 kit, and that's exactly what I would search for if you can't find this exact model in stock. I'll also have several alternative links in that cheat sheet, which is in the description. If any part is listed as an alternative on that sheet, that means you can easily swap it out without any sort of disclaimer. What also doesn't need a disclaimer is the SSD choice because you can go with virtually any Gen 3 or Gen 4 drive that you want, so you know I went with the Clevcraft C910 one terabyte NVMe. For the 1,000th time, this is just simply the most affordable Gen 4 one terabyte drive on the market right now, and I actually really like it for two reasons. It's reliable for the price, and I really appreciate that the heat shield comes uninstalled. For a super budget motherboard like this where it doesn't come with the heat sink for the SSD, you can just install this right on here and it's good to go. If your motherboard did come with a heatsink, then you wouldn't install it. I love that flexibility. And finally, to polish off this motherboard prep, we'll install the CPU cooler, and this is the Thermalwrite Assassin X 120 SE ARGB. I'm not kidding when I tell you, I think I've purchased over 500 of these at this point for various YouTube builds, and especially our pre-built on zttbuilds.com. This is one of the best sub $20 coolers, especially if you're looking for an aesthetic all-white RGB one. We'll see in the upcoming benchmarking section that it had no problem cooling the Ryzen 5 3600, and it can definitely handle beefier CPUs without a problem. Again, alternative options are listed in that cheat sheet. But now that the motherboard is prepped, let's start working on the power supply, and this here is the MSI Mag A550BN. Just like the SSD, this has become a repeat choice on my budget build videos, and that's because this is consistently one of the most affordable, reliable units. It's kind of a theme around here. It's rated tier C on the new and improved PSU tier list, which you can find for free at zttbuildhelp.com, and basically my motto is that if a build is around $1,000, or less than tier C is perfectly fine. I'm not smart enough to know all the little details, voltage numbers, protections, and everything that goes into a proper power supply review. That's why I just trust the experts from the tier list by the appropriate tier rating based on how much the build costs and which GPU I'm using, and it hasn't failed me yet. What's also never failed me in my entire journey of PC building are cable extensions. I threw on these Okino 16 gauge all white ones that I grabbed for $16 on Amazon. If you're gonna buy cable extensions, remember that this is purely an aesthetic choice. If your goal is to keep the cost down as low as possible, then you do not need to buy them. It doesn't matter what kind of power supply you buy because these just connect to the ends of the cables. The downside is that it'll certainly add bulk to your cable management process, but I think this aesthetic uplift is worth it for a build like this. Now that the power supply and motherboard are prepped, it's time to put the Lego pieces together into 
into the case, and this is the DIY PC ARGB R1-W, which has been sitting on Newegg for just under $60 for a few months now. We actually did a limited edition run on ZTTBuilds.com using this case, and people seem to really love it, including myself. It comes with four pre-installed ARGB fans, which makes the building process a breeze. It also has a USB-C connector, which you don't typically see in budget cases, and overall, the aesthetics are pretty clean. Oh, and a quick note about the USB-C connector. If you buy a super budget motherboard like we did, you're not gonna be able to take full advantage of it. There's no USB-C header on this motherboard, but if you absolutely wanted to use the port, you could buy a USB 2.0 adapter. It'll just be pretty slow. My recommendation would be just to leave it unplugged, but that's up to you. A better but more expensive B550 motherboard could have that port on there, so keep your eyes peeled if you really care about that. But yeah, other than that, the only part we have left here is the GPU, and although the black model does kind of look a little out of place with this build, oh. it definitely gets the job done. This is the MSI Twin Frozer RTX 2060 Super. I grabbed this for just $150 on Jawa, and honestly, if you look right now, you might find a better deal. I snagged this over a month ago, and the price of used GPUs is actually going down for once, so feel free to get even better price performance than I did. At this $500 total build cost, that will leave you with around $150 to spend on the graphics card, which is exactly what I did, and the only other card I truly consider is the RX 5700 XT. That card will actually give you slightly better raw horsepower, but of course there are some additional benefits with going with Team Green. Both of these cards are super impressive for the price because they can play any game you throw at it as long as you're willing to use some upscaling technology on some of the titles. Before we get to all that benchmarking though, here's what the final parts list is looking like, and as you can see, my total ended up just a touch over $500, which I'd still consider a dub. Even with the black GPU, I still think this looks pretty good. I wish I would have found the time to paint it though. Oh, that might be the ugliest GPU I've ever seen in my life. Oh, I totally forgot there's red on here. We got black, white, yellow, red, and gray. Oh, we are definitely painting that one. But let's just see how much price to performance we're getting with it now. We'll start with Cyberpunk actually, because that's just become the default game tester over the past year. And believe it or not, we actually didn't need any upscaling. In 1080p high settings without DLSS, this build cranked out a pretty impressive 75 FPS average. Call of Duty also didn't need any sort of upscaling because in 1080p with basic or essentially medium settings, we got 87 FPS. And same thing with Marvel Rivals in 1080p Pro getting almost 100 FPS. Now, if you do want to play the latest AAA games, which are super demanding and usually unoptimized, I would recommend some upscaling and the Nvidia GPU comes in handy. Here's Monster Hunter Wilds, which is incredibly tough to run and in 1080p low with some DLSS action, we actually got just over the target 60 FPS mark. Same thing with Assassin's Creed Shadows, but here we actually use 1080p and medium settings with DLSS and again, just getting over 60. Here's the rest of the games we tested and I consider every single game we ran playable and it shows how impressive older and budget hardware is is if you combine them all up right like we did with this build. We just uploaded a full dedicated benchmarking run on the ZTT Extras channel, so if you wanna see how every title ran with longer gameplay clips, that video will be down in the description. Oh, and by the way, we've actually stepped up our game recently on ZTT Extras. We have all sorts of really cool content over there, so feel free to drop a sub, which will signal to us that we should continue doing that. But now let's move on to the cooling performance real quickly, and here's Black Myth Wukong getting about 70 to 80 FPS, and that GPU load is maxed out the entire time. The RTX 20 60 Super stays nice and chilly at that low 70 degree mark, which you love to see. And here's Cinebench 2024 running a CPU stress test where the CPU gets blasted up to 100% the entire time. And as you can see in the lower right here, the max temperature it only got up to was 75 degrees. In mid 2025, we finally have a somewhat decent PC hardware market, at least in this budget world. And if you know what you're doing, it's very easy to put together a high performing and aesthetic gaming PC like this for $500. Quick reminder about that cheat sheet, which is linked down in the description. And if you want to stretch your budget up a bit to around $600, then the video on the screen right now is exactly how I would do that.